Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Alright guys, and welcome to episode 17 of War Room. One of these times I'm just going to get those numbers completely wrong and look like a huge dunce, but I think I'm right this time. Alright guys, welcome. A uh, bunch of us are fresh off of playing matches, so we're tired, but we're going to enjoy ourselves. Uh, tonight we're going to talk about league standings, as we've all been busy lately playing and whatnot. So I'm going to give you guys a quick update on what's going on there. And then we're going to talk about the new info on the launch module, which promises to be... Pretty awesome. Uh, first off, right off the bat, Siri and I had a bet recently, which I'm going to let him explain. Oh, how kind of you. <laughs> uh, the bet was we each did an interview with Doyle for the MRBC website. He's got several interviews on there just of community members and competitive players. And the bet was which one of us could get the most hits on our interview. The final score was Zero Thrax, 162. Raffle Waffle, 163. It's pretty so, awesome. I I mean, not that I don't like You want to explain the stakes? Oh yeah, not that I don't like completely crushing people, but uh, I'm happy winning by one. So we were going to do the classic War Room bet, which is uh, shaving your beard, but I really like my beard, and I didn't think Siri, Siri would actually release his uh, I'll Make a Man Out of You soundtrack. So we decided to go with something a little bit more classic whoa, War Room whoa, style. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. <laughs> it wasn't that you didn't think I would release it. I didn't want to shave my beard. You weren't willing to match the stakes. It's true. I wasn't. Well, so I, I thought... I thought a more traditional war room bet of uh, lots of alcohol would fit better. So the winner gets to tell the loser to drink at any point tonight during the episode, and the loser has to drink. And I won. So, uh, Siri, you talked during the opening intro, so I think you've got a drink. <laughs> oh, perfect. And the games begin. And with that, let's go around and do uh, some introductions. Not that you shouldn't know all of these beautiful faces already. Siri, start us off. By introducing yourself. Siri. <laughs> introduce yourself. Make him drink again. Siri. Seriously? Sorry, I think I lost audio. Give me a moment. Oh, okay. In that case, we'll move on. Uh, Queenblade, why don't you introduce yourself? Hello, mech fans, and welcome to another exciting episode of War Room. Every time. I'm Queenblade from the 228th Light Pilot. All right, and then we have Sir Trent Howell. Oops. Sir Trent Howell. I'm the Knight Colonel of Blackstone. And I lead uh, Blackstone's Crusader Company in competition. And we just had a fantastic game tonight, which we will talk about a little bit in a little, in a little bit. So, and then Harry. I'm Harry seventy eight. I'm uh, officer in Steel Jaguar. I run the EU team. Harry, also known as Pentakill Master. <laughs> we'll talk about that as a little. Tonight. We'll talk about that a little bit as well. And then last, but certainly least. Uh, I'm Sace of <laughs> Dig, finally rebearded, uh, light pilot, general asshole. I was okay. going to say, that's not a very big beard. It's almost like you have to shave it off. <laughs> it's almost like somebody lost a bet. Uh, oh, it's no. almost like that. Do I still um, need to introduce myself? Or? Yes, you do. Okay, I am Siri Waffle, Rafa Waffle's co-host, and member of Steel Jaguar Gaming. All right, and with that, I believe I have all of the teeny tiny little details to the overlay set. You guys should be able to tell when Queen Blade is talking and when Sir Trent is talking. 
So from there, we're going to move on to a quick update on each of the three leagues. So right now we have uh, the Merrick Civil War, which is during the trial, which is in the trial of position. Uh, Queenblade is keeping some fantastic stats on that. We have Arhad, which has just gone through some league shuffling, and Siri is going to give us a quick note on that. And then Harry is here as our glorious uh, MRBC representative to talk a little bit about what's going on there. So do you guys have an order that you want to go in? Do you have your stuff in order, Siri, or no? I'm actually still trying to get a hold of Mag to get the exact details. Perfect. Okay. Let's got. Let's have Queen go first. I know he's got plenty to talk about. Yep. Yep. Uh, you have the trial thing up on the the main monitor. In three, two, one. Now I do. Oh, nope. The the thing is a little bit bugged, but it will meet just in just a second. Well, is it the leaderboard or is it the it's the stats. campaign? Okay. No. Put the campaign one up. I posted it in the channel. Oh God! So much work. No, it's fine. So basically, we finished the first three rounds. First three rounds kind of give us an idea of the new teams, where they should be positioned, who's obviously dominating their tier. So we moved a couple teams around to try and obviously balance out the league more. Now we're in the second half. So first half, you moved up. The second half, you now have a chance to obviously fall back down. So in case a team that did well moved up and then suddenly didn't do too well or maybe they're going to move up again we'll, we'll be able to obviously balance it so as you can see we have six tier one teams well the two bottom teams are going to drop down to tier two from there you're going to see another two you know obviously the top four teams two is going to drop down again two is going to drop down again and then at the end we're going to have four teams for each tier uh, and then from there, we're going to separate them into four different factions where they will do a campaign to try and claim as much of Merrick space as possible. And then on the very bottom, you see those little peas. Well, those guys are pirates. They don't get to play nearly as much as the tier teams, but they kind of get the taste of competition. They can either do a... Uh, we set them up to where they can kind of fight in a ladder system with themselves to determine like who's the best pirate, or they can attempt to attack faction teams and take away planets from them. Right now, it's pretty exciting, and some teams were pretty shocked to see, and I hope everyone's having fun. Uh, sadly, we've lost two teams so far, uh, Blazing Aces and Remnant, but we did gain a new team, Canadian Expeditionary Force. Siri, I think you should probably drink in remembrance of those teams. One for each, or just... Uh, probably one for each. <laughs> okay, Damn. sorry. Keep going, Queenblade. Yes. And then, obviously, if you go back to the leaderboards, I'm keeping, obviously, a running tab here of every round for every pilot, and also keeping tabs on the, the teams themselves. I mean, it, quite literally, I am pulling all the data from the end game result screens and using that to just kind of give the pilots something to entertain themselves with. I have on the first sheet seasonal stats there. That's for any pilots that ha has had more than nine games. And uh, they're all ranked in averages. The, um, the very tip top of the seasonals is they're done by mechs. And uh, each of those is literally kind of like a league record in terms of per mech. And then after that sheet, we have the by rounds, which is obviously done by their stats for set round. And then it's broken down by units from there. And uh, yeah, if you guys want to see what they're doing or how you kind of rank against them, by all means, go in and check it out. We have about 300 to 350 pilots per round. Holy God, first of all. Second of all, I can only hope that this means that there will be some form of uh, Mech Warrior Online Fantasy League. Yes, there will be. Where we draft actually. pilots. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. Because we're, that's what I'm trying to, I'm trying to finalize how to do the, what's called the Merrick match score. Um, basically, kind of like a battle value for said pilot. Um, and then we got to work out other stuff if we get a b group of people who kind of determine like, okay, you get 300 battle value, you get to select up to 12 pilots with those points, you know, depending on what their current seasonal average is. Um, and then from there, 
each week you just take their pilots and take their scores or whatnot. But yeah, we have to figure all that out. But yeah, essentially we'll have something like that where we can have a fantasy warrior online league. Sounds so awesome, excited. I'm not going to lie. Now, of course, I have many room for beds. Oh, I know, right? Check out... And uh, then, uh, but much thanks goes towards uh, Marcus Rowland. He created a automated system for me that makes it a lot easier than me having to do each sheet essentially by hand. So now all I have to do is do a stat input and it throws all the stats to, uh, to every sheet where all I have to do is copy and paste it over. Damn. Harry, I bet you're uh, cursing that your pentakill didn't count. Your, your uh, <laughs> match kills average would go up so high. And then in response for nice. Blackie Flawless, I'm determining, uh, I've been coming up with the idea of obviously, because this is the first time I'm doing it, where I'm now going to probably take the best three games out of a best of five series. Rather than, because obviously, like you said, teams that get that play further in their series will obviously have more numbers. But if I take just the best three games, then it should technically be fair across all pilots that way. So then how would you determine like, who, like what the best three games are? Yeah, see, that's another thing. I think it's going to probably be done by Merrick's score, since mm -hmm. the, that score is uh, weighed upon by all the other stats. Well, awesome. Uh, anything else you want to talk about about Merrick? Well, let's see. We start the campaign, I believe, March 17th. The final game for uh, the trial is March 11th. Cool. Wow, that's rapidly approaching. I need to remember to buy my kit fox so I get my 30 days of premium time tomorrow. Tisk tisk raffle, falling behind. We get our social rewards. Ooh. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. In that case, Siri or Harry, who wants it next? Go for Harry. Okay. Well, the MRBC leagues just kicked off. Uh, we've got teams seeing playing so far. Uh, now they and what you want to check out if you haven't checked it out recently is the website, and there's like an absolute wealth of content on there now. We've got all kinds of match recordings from loads of teams going up on there. And the other thing you can do, uh, depending on you know your level of interest, you can go on there and under the live match section, no, not live match, it's under pre-match. Yes, pre-match, pre-match scheduled matches. You'll see there that there'll be like a, a list of the matches that have, that have already gone on and the ones that are upcoming. Then straight from this website as well, you can go to the live match and go to the live streams when that match is happening. And you'll, you'll have the team's live streamer on there. See the results have come up here. We've had uh, some brilliant games. Uh, we had, uh, I, I've already done like a commentary video for one of them. But uh, the first one that was in was the, um, it was the uh, California Conquerors versus Robinson Rangers Brigade. Um, and it was absolutely brilliant. I, I really enjoyed commentating on it. And got to watch the video and if you're going to watch if you can't watch all of it you've got to watch the fourth drop it's well worth seeing um really entertaining good fights um you know because i didn't know what to expect from these guys i haven't seen them before and i was i was pleasantly surprised really good fun but there's so much content on there now with with all the matches with people submitting them all uh, it's really gone down well we, we've already played uh na played credit um, and the part of Steel Jaguar has done three drops of the four. Um, not with the greatest of starts, but we've really enjoyed it. Completely different style than we're used to, but um, we're still trying to work it out. Really good fun. Um, oh, there are a lot of recorded matches on here. That's awesome. Yeah, there's loads. On the Go front on. page, you'll see... Uh, the match recording as well, or the match commentary that I put up, and hopefully we'll get a lot more of that um, from uh, yourself and Siri, and uh, and Mag should be doing some. If anyone else is interested, they should let me know, getting some commentary on these. Some of these matches have been really good fun to watch. Yeah, for sure. I yeah, for the record, the reason there are so many is because this is your performance is ranked on C-bills. 
um, you play out all four matches, but you get a C bill bonus if you submit the recordings of all the matches, so that's why we've got so many. Yeah, which is super cool. Uh, it's going to make for a lot more... the ability for a lot more fun matches to watch and cast and stuff like that, which is fun for, you know, people like Siri and I. Yeah, um, we, well, that was exactly what we wanted. We wanted it to be really accessible, visible. Um, you can actually see good competitive games that you don't really get to see that often. Although more teams are streaming these days, it's a lot, lot of fun to be had watching them. Um, these are just easy. Click on the, the match and the drop from either perspective. See what they're doing in their drops. With the, the rules are quite different to any other leagues doing, so creates some interesting fights, I think. Oh, yeah. And uh, now that I'm, of course, looking at this, Trent, did you get screenshots for tonight? Yep. Oh, perfect. <laughs> so, I haven't figured out how to report it yet, but yeah. Uh, okay, well, we can do that later. I just remembered that I didn't, so. For those of you who that don't know, uh, Trent and I played each other tonight. We had the BSK versus 228 uh, MRBC drop, in which they handily beat me on everything but the the last heaviest drop, so it's really fun. Uh, a completely different feel than any of the other leagues, so I am I really enjoy it so far. Which yeah, drop I, I was like your favorite? It was. Oh, my favorite drop was obviously the last one, but that's just because the strategy I was playing worked perfectly. That's, that's why we took you've it. You've got eight assaults in that one. Yeah. You've got to have two different assaults. Yep. It's, uh, we ran eight atlases, to, no, uh, it's six. Sorry, assaults, sorry, six, thought, six, six assaults. Heavies. Six assaults, four heavies. Yes, two it is six assaults. Sorry. So it's uh, we ran, we ran four atlases, two stalkers, four Jaeger mechs, and uh, a couple Jenners, and we got <laughs> all brawling, of course, and we got Alpine, and we're just sitting like, well, <laughs> fuck, it's Alpine. What do we do? <laughs> but fortunately, I'd had Alpine the night before, so what we did was we just we hid up on top of the. Uh, the, the east side spawn like up on top of that hill right above the, the spawn and then we had our lights threatened cap and sure enough BSK poured over and we just uh, as Grimlock put it I've never seen it rain so many atlases so yeah if you lose to a brawling deck on uh, Alpine you deserve to lose <laughs> I mean to be fair you guys beat us quite handily in every other drop so good games it was a lot of fun but yeah no I I'm really enjoying MRBC um I'm going to go over to the rules so that I can show people some of the drops. Um, the rules are really fun. Ha, ha, what, was your, what was your favorite drop, Trent? Uh, I actually like the light drops where uh, you're required to take X, E, C, M, max. You can't uh, cap within the first six minutes, so it, it changes the way that you approach the, um, the game. Um, so we actually really like that. And we also got to use a lot of our BS Kedas, so that's yeah. a nice change as well. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Um, I'd have to say that the light and heaviest drop were my two favorites because they are Hold the on. most, the most different from everything else. Say that again, Trent. You use your what? The BSK is. I love that you have a name for them, dude. It's my favorite thing ever. I think didn't Siri uh, name that? Siri, was nope. that you? Oh. No, it wasn't me. <laughs> I'm I'm really glad because it's going to be a lot easier to use whenever I cast one of your matches from now on. I was still is still dead to me, but Trent. With BSK, it is you can be undead to me. <laughs> Hooray! Yay! It just means we have to make another bet to lose Sace's beard. Um. So yeah. Uh, anybody who hasn't checked it out already, you should go check out MRBC. I'm gonna link it in chat really quick. Just make sure you um, browse through the website. There's there's a ton of stuff there. Um, Shell Doyle, Doyle's girlfriend, who's doing the website, has just done an amazing job on it. Like to go, f there's no other website like it. You know, full credit to the other guys running the leagues. You know, but this, this one I think is really accessible to anyone who's you know even not participating in the league. You can see what's going on, and I think it's a lot of entertainment to be had there. Yeah, the website's phenomenal. I think this is probably the best league website I've seen yet. Don't let Tony hear you. Yeah, don't let Deadfire hear that somebody designed an awesome website. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, guys, Merkstar.net. Um, anyway, have you guys been following the um, the news articles with the the articles about different people? Obviously, you must have advertised it the other day with your little bet going on. 
Uh, the yeah, other news some... articles? Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of really good articles up there and from interviews with players and so on. It's good fun. Yeah, there's a lot of fun news. Uh, the interrogations are a blast. Trent has one up there as well. Yeah, his is um, the best. Yeah, Trent's pretty awesome. I gotta find it now. He mentions me. Does really? Yeah, I really hate Queen Play. <laughs> I just remember uh, thinking that uh, Harry's had the funniest punishment. What is it? It's uh. You or no, it, Harry, you are found guilty of rounding up homeless locusts and forcing them into backstreet bum fights. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A duo asked me to come up with stuff, and it was like, ah. Oh. <laughs> it was well done. <laughs> Where is... Oh, I can't find. Oh, there's Trent. Okay. Oh, interrogation file one. First one, was it? Yeah, he was the first one. Hold on, I have to find Queenblade. Yeah, the newest New article. Near the bottom. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, who is your toughest in opponent? <laughs> And the newest Queen. article up is uh, titled "India is Shredded." If you watch the uh, match commentary, you you understand why. We, <laughs> we've been using that all tonight in our practice drops. So it was good fun. India is shredded. I'll have to take a look at that. Well, yeah. So everybody, check out MRBC. It's a bunch of fun. It's really cool. Um, that means it is, of course, Serio Thrax's turn to give us an Arhat update. Well, I can't really say that much because there hasn't been any official statement yet. Um, but suffice it to say that we've had a small bit of issue with teams dropping out. Cough 228 to cough. Um, <laughs> but we started off with three divisions with five people, uh, five teams in each. And it was supposed to be a double round robin to give teams a good chance of just getting used to their opponents and getting revenge. And improving their game. And, um, but with, I think it's three or four teams dropping out since the start of the season, we've been forced into a position where Division 1 still has five teams, but Divisions 2 and 3 only have three apiece. And that's not really fair. Uh, so the options that were on the table were either consolidating down to two divisions or um, ending it early and going to playoffs. Um, I haven't been able to get a hold of Mag tonight, so I don't know what he's decided on. But there should be an official eh, official announcement on that soon. Well, cool. Um, this is where you tell me the drink. I've been sitting here with my beer in hand for like a fucking half hour. You know you can drink without me telling you to, right? Yeah, but I assumed you would abuse the privilege. Oh, okay. In that case, drink. Um, you would have yeah. sold it to me. I would have abused it. <sighs> yeah, but I didn't want to kill Siri. I need him to cast matches. Oh, come off it. I have two days to recover. <laughs> True story. Um, yeah, so we'll look for an announcement on that in the very near future. Um, how are st What are standings looking like that for now? Doesn't Magician has a post about there somewhere, doesn't he? Uh, he has not updated it for okay. this week's standings. Okay, uh, just going through right now, currently Division 2 Lords are in first place, uh, Division 3 Swords are in first place, and Division 1, I think I know who's in first place, but let's just make sure, HHOD is in first place. Uh, okay. Swords is actually league. in Division 2 and second the Lords, um, VSK the is in first place on season three, uh, Division 3. Oh, I was in recent events, not current events for some reason. That's weird. Yep. Okay, well, anyway. Some reason. Go ahead. Ah, uh, Siri, for correcting me, you should probably drink. There we go. There we go. I like this game a lot more now. Okay. It's alright if I match him. Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, I'm drinking out of this nice little flask, which is complete whiskey, so... I'm well on my way to being truly war-roomed out. Uh... Let's talk about the launch module, I guess. Leagues are doing well, everything's healthy. Uh, personally, I'm just waiting for Tony to expand the map on the Merrick page, because it's still like the old turn, like the last turn from Merrick Season 2, so... Well, guess what, Raffle? Is it updated? No fucking way. No, no, no. No, map's not updated. <laughs> but if you go back to the campaign results spreadsheet, and you go to the very last worksheet, called Worksheet, 
you will see where we have crafted and created all the planets that will be used for the League. Oh. As long as we get Space Vegas back, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, Space Vegas. This season, Sig is keeping Space Vegas. You probably got to scroll down a bit, but oh, I'm uh, just gonna I'm just gonna show everybody the interactive map from last season. Yeah, uh, that's fine. There is, Bay. No, that's not Midkiff. But, but essentially, uh, we spread out the restrictions so that everyone kind of had the same type of restrictions, but they weren't like next to each other or anything. So there's no one that says, you know, like last season where uh, I think we had like two or three three restriction planets where mm -hmm. some other faction only had a bunch of one restrictions. We kind of spread it out now so that it's kind of even across the board, but they're not all the same restrictions. This is Space Vegas, by the way. Tania Borealis. The pride of the uh, Stuart Commonwealth Empire from last season. Um, okay. Well, no, I'm super excited about the Merrick map. You guys are putting a ton of great work, and uh, not to mention that all is, of these uh, stats. Funky. Yeah, Funky, Funky from Swords is doing a great job. Um, Siri drink. Uh, let's move on to the watch module. So, I'm going to paint a vast, glorious picture, Siri drink, of the future of Mech Warrior, where one day, once Siri drinks, you'll be able to log in, find your opponent, and after Siri finishes drinking, you'll be able. <laughs> You'll be able to drop into a match and complete a best of five series in almost the time it would take Siri to drink. I'm sorry, were those commands to drink? Or were yes, they, they were. No, they were commands to drink. I think that was drink. at least seven. It's like, it was five. But yeah, so launch module. We got news on the launch module today, which is really cool. Uh, launch module, for those of you watching who don't know, although I'm pretty sure most of you do, is private lobbies, which means that we will be able to drop into a match against our opponent, do a best of five in as long as it takes us to ready up our mechs and play the game. No more sync dropping, none of that bit, none of that jazz. So we're really excited. And with this information drop has also come information on the new matchmaker. And so we're also gonna talk about that. So let's start off with the new matchmaker. So they got rid of what one of the, one of the most important things is, they got rid of the two to 12 man queue. That are two to eleven man queue. That's not going to be a thing. That one of the first feedbacks I heard about that was that it was quote another example of PGI backpedaling, and therefore it was automatically bad. Optimizing. Now, I don't know. I feel Personally, like I feel like they got to a point and they were like, "This is really really bad. We shouldn't do this." And then like, "Yeah, okay," and then didn't do it. I don't think that's a bad thing. Exactly. Great that's right, because if you think about it, 12 men coordinated going against 12 pugs. In an 11 man queen, there'd be one pug. <laughs> Come on. Be totally balanced. I mean, like, when, when this came out, we were discussing it, and we said there was no way in hell this is going to work, mm -hmm. either from a balance standpoint or from, like, actually matching the teams well. And so, non shocker, here we are three months later, and that's what they're saying. Yeah, and I, I think that that's fine, though. I don't think that it's a problem if they look at something and you're like, oh, we thought this was going to work, we thought about it more, and we were wrong, so we're going to change like how we're going to do it. So. Yeah, to me, they, this is, like, to me this is a positive thing, because they're not doubling down on a stupid decision. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's very nice. So they put up the statistics there of um, that, the different amount of cues. Boggles my mind. I don't think they did the numbers right. I feel like they did. It just still boggles my mind. I feel like... Because, I mean, I, it's probably one of those thing, areas where the higher the ELO bracket, the more groups you see. Whereas lower in the ELO bracket is more the single droppers. I was going it's, to say that, but it didn't want to, like, like eh, in the higher ELO brackets, I didn't want to be that guy. Well, it just shows how important coordination and communication is. Yeah, and also in the higher yellow bracket, you happen to have a lot of teammates. And then you're True. probably going to see a lot of solo group or solo people dropping this weekend. Medium versus the world. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to be playing, and that's okay with me. BSK does. BSK. Someone, someone just mentioned something there um, that they think that 
two to four man they're going to see a lot of foul drops but if you read it i think they've possibly changed the way that they're bracketing people or matching people because it appears to me that you're if you're above average elo you're an entire bracket so you could be the top of that or right at the bottom you've got like a middle bracket and a bottom so it's going to be they're not going to match very strongly on your level of skill I think you're talking about what? I think it's tier three, where it's fifteen hundred yeah. to twenty eight hundred. Yes. Yeah. It's the uh, uh, it's the biggest tier. Yeah, and like new players start at thirteen hundred, so it's really not that far before they're going up into the next tier and yeah. facing the likes of like Jaggers lances. So if it if they put that system in, I I don't think we should get failed drops. It would be pretty unlucky, I think. Yeah. Well, yeah. somebody was asking about the statistic, and I'm looking at it, and it says, out of all matches yeah, launched, 84% are solo that. launches. And I'm wondering, like, what exactly a launch constitutes, because it could just mean queuing up. So if they're treating four people as a four-man queuing up, the 4% statistic could be misleading. Uh, if you do it per capita, that's actually that would actually be four times as many, right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping they did the statistic right. If this is what they're they using as their basis. Yeah. Well. And then they are kind of forcing the 3-3-3-3 three, 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 three matchmaker. I'm not even that mad about that, though. 3-3-3-3 three, 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 three is fairly balanced. Like, it's like if you're just doing a random scrim and you don't have time to set up a whole drop. Like, everybody... Right. I mean, I go to 3-3-3-3. Three, 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 three. I mean, it's that's not what bad. they used... They used they used that at the invitational uh, tournament uh, for the all, launch party. Always bringing up the invitational queen blade. I got my t my trophy right next to me. It's all shiny. <laughs> I Too actually bad prefer you... the uh, three 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 to the tonnage. That way you don't see people forced into locusts, so people can run highlanders. And... Yeah, I agree. I think that, and this is another thing where they said that they were going to do strict tonnage, and they were like, "Well, no, that clearly isn't going to work." So we went back on it. We're going to do weight bracketing, which is fine. Or uh, cla uh, sorry, class bracketing, which is, in my opinion, better. You see them dropping with four lights, and it's just going to be like, match not found. So that, yeah, that was the interesting thing, is that you won't be able to do that now. Did they say whether or not, are you going to be dropping... <sighs> so are you going to get a lobby, and then you pick your mech, or are you going to be dropping, and then you get your opponent's pick. From what I was gathering, it seems like you drop and then it sets you into the right lobby of the teams. Okay. So if you drop three assaults and one light, it'll make you, and there's no there's no lobbies that need three assaults, it'll make your own lobby and fill it up with single people who have, you know, lights, mediums, things like that. Well, okay. actually, by sheer necessity, um, if you drop as a group, it is creating a new team and then filling it around you. And that's because they announced that there will only be one pre-made per side. I'm that's kinda, really going to suck for the people who are dropping in twos. I'm kind of matched... <laughs> I'm kind of upset about that because it it means we won't have all star matches anymore. Where it's like a lance of two two eight, a lance of SJR, a lance of SWK, a lance of Sig, a lance of like in BOS, and a lance of BSK. Because those matches are hilarious, especially late at night. Oh yeah, because I mean, like midnight or one o'clock, like if you, everybody's running fours, that's all it is. It's like, oh look, half of SJR. Oh, well, you know, <laughs> I don't know. It's fun. Um. Yeah, because it turns into, what do you think they're running? Yeah. Oh, well, I'm just concerned that with that implementation, and I know it's a necessary evil, but that it'll turn the game into whose four-man is better. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and it already kind of is like that, uh, except with the edge cases of uh, Matchmaker putting two or more lances on one side. So I can understand that it's reducing that issue, but it's still not perfectly solving it. A lot of the times, so I find... Go ahead. Sorry, sir. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say that a lot of the times when I uh, drop in with a group, uh, and you do come against another group, it's often decided by how quickly your puggies die. So I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, well, it might not be totally imbalanced. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Um, I think it's going to play a lot like 
eight mans used to, maybe, <laughs> but I'm not sure. The other issue is the fact that late at night is the poor people dropping twos. You get stuck in a four man queue. Or you get stuck against a four man. You don't have another another uh, group to back you up. Speaking of people, we should feel sorry for Siri. Drink. I don't feel uh, sorry for Siri. <laughs> saying the people that two drop late at night, ending up against a four drop, are going to be at a disadvantage, not knowing that there's no other set groups in their play. Yeah, I think it was strange they said that they wouldn't balance two groups of two against a group of four. Seems a bit absurd to me. Why is that imbalanced? I feel like it's gonna ha it's got to have something to do with how they're implementing the system and not how it's actually balanced. Well, they said it was the fact because the team of four would still have better communication than two teams of two, but by that I mean wouldn't a team of four have better communication than a team of two and ten pugs? Exactly. Yeah. I didn't understand yeah. that. Also, yeah, they said, it, they said it was possible for that to happen, but it would be a last resort if there, no, if there were no other fours in queue. The other question is this. Often they, they, they stressed how important communication is and how it can give a team a winning advantage in the fight. Where's my in-game in comms? Name a single game you play right now. Name one that you don't instantly mute everybody on your team because they're possibly just giant assholes. Like I play Call of Duty. I Left play. Dead. I play. Oh, okay. Left for Dead. But that, yeah. Natural Selection too. I've never played it. Is it good? It's good. I don't know. But... I played it for about half an hour. Okay. Because like I, I mean, could just be because the MOBA community is made for absolute trash human beings. But whenever I play a game of Han, there's always that dude on my team. Where I'm just like, well, I don't want to listen to you. So I just usually mute everyone and I don't use my in-game chat. Ask Halo? Lego Pirate sometime just how many times he's been banned from Dota voice chat. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised. Legends. I'm not surprised that Lego Pirate gets banned from voice chat. Nobody should be. Um. Okay, that's one of those things for me that's like, it'd be cool, but it's just super not a priority for me. But that's because most of my play is with four people or twelve people. But I just, you know, they, they make all these comments about it, and then... It's a pretty base feature. I mean, name a game coming out where it's not already in the game as a base feature. Multiplayer. I don't play any other games. I play this, Counter-Strike, and fucking Dota. A little bit of Starcraft. I was playing the, um, the Titanfall beta, and uh, there's a voice chat for that. You've got to press a key. I played probably eight hours of that beta. I really enjoyed it. I didn't hear one person talk ever. Yeah, <laughs> it I was agree never on that used. one. Yeah, it's just, I don't know, it's one of those things that, like, it would be nice, and you could ask, like, questions, but not to not to pick on certain people, but I don't need to drop into a game and just hear all of the spam that I already see in chat. Siri wants to drink. Drink, Siri. <laughs> it's down to the point where he has to poke me. Oh, Harry, is that an SJR mug? Yes, it is. Oh, so You have an jelly. SJR? What? Queen, why don't we have 228 mugs? What the fuck? <laughs> because even I have an SJR mug. I've seen Siri's uh, SJR cell phone case because there's uh, like a picture of him using it, and it's hilarious. The selfie. Um, my, t my team bought me that. Um, the EU team bought me that. And team, as well as the Phoenix package when we won um, Run Hot or Die Season 2 and Last Mix Standard Season 2. Well done. Don't complain, uh, really Rumble. You know your team doesn't love you. True. No, uh, nobody loves you, man. Don't you have a T-shirt? Don't give me that. No, I don't. Oh, okay. You're just there's you merchandise. Suck. I joined too late, and they're yeah. like, "No, you can't have a T-shirt. They're limited time." It's like, Fuck you guys. <laughs> Fucking like people that don't even play anymore have T-shirts, and I don't have one. So upset. Queen, can I get a two-two eight T-shirt? Yes. Thank you. Siri can drink. Um. At this point, it's, I'm allowing Siri to drink. I'm not telling him when to drink. <laughs> um. Okay, so, back on topic, guys. Not really, but kind of. So, other than the solo queue and the like four-man queue and stuff like that, there's information on private matches. Yeah, there's a special note in there, if you read it. 
where the where? use of premium time to get access to the more yeah. advanced options is currently a temporary implementation. The plan is to eventually move to a pay per use model, which will fit much better into both the player experience and business model requirements. Yeah, I prefer uh, premium time, doesn't sound that bad to me. Using premium time for it, but having to pay to win. If, or it's, pay to win if it's like 15 MC per match, maybe. It would still stack up fast, yes, because it will. consider what happens when you launch into it, and then one of your guy, guys crashes. Mulligan! Oh, well, Mulligan. 15, but that's 15 MC, MC gone? Down, the, down the drain. At and least I would rather time. pay for premium. Oh my god. You're yeah. getting the bonus of other premium things with All right. you might as well. well Clearly, clearly somebody was watching last time we talked about this, so somebody hopefully is watching this time. Don't make it anything other than premium time. I understand yeah. why you want to do it from a business standpoint, but the competitive players will be angry. Very say, angry. But think about it. You are now limiting our ability to practice with other teams. Well, so, because, I mean, on average, we could play something like maybe 12 to 15 matches a night. The reason, if, the reason for that, though, is that they don't want the public 12 NQ to die. Understood. And if it's just running off of premium time, then everybody's just going to play on private servers. Not necessarily, because with the private servers, you're not making money. Uh, there are no rewards when you're doing the private match. That's true. Um, so Wait, so I'm... The so general 12 queue should still be healthy. So I'm but... paying money to play the game for no reward. Basically, and that's another reason why I think premium time is the way to go. I agree. The other thing is that from a business standpoint, to me, it actually makes more sense to do premium time. Because if you consider somebody who hadn't used it before and they try it, and then they're like, oh my god, this is so nice, plus 50% C-bills and 50% XP, premium time is actually really nice in that regard. And so if you make that the barrier to entry and the requirement for launching into private matches, then you might actually get some people trying it out and getting hooked on it. She kind of so, got a little hooked on the, uh, the Phoenix package premium time, kind of missing it. Oh no, yeah, it's so good, right? I finally acted. I did the math, and I was like, "If I buy, if I buy the clan package, I buy the uh, like how much premium time I have banked." And I did the math, and I activated my premium time so that my premium time will run out on the day the clan max are injected. Yeah, I've in the past done the math and came to came to the conclusion that I'd rather buy premium time than buy hero max. Uh, just because premium time would give me the flexibility to run anything I want, yep. in addition to leveling up max faster. Now I can let you make private messages. Hopefully they keep it that way. Where is that special note? I need to find that. Control you wouldn't F have the misery then, Siri. Uh, I bought the misery and the mermets and the ember because they were actually fun max. Everything else... Um, like that I might have bought just for money making, I avoided buying and put the money towards premium time instead. But yeah, it's at the very end. Yeah, I there see it go. now. Goo. Has anyone else got a, a sneaking suspicion that we're going to... Because if you, if you read about it, to, do, to drop against a team, you have to form your teams and, and then one person will have to fight the leader of the other team. So you'll make this massive group private game. Anyone else got a suspicion that you're going to be able to see all the mechs of the opponent, opposing team, given this current UI? I really hope not. <laughs> I, I really hope not. It's worth mentioning again here. So again, hopefully somebody is listening to this. Um, but the first time they announced this, I actually tweeted um, Russ. I didn't get a response, but I tweeted him about that concern. So... Spread the news and bring that point up. Hopefully they listen. I'll, I'll get on my War Room Twitter that nobody follows because I don't actually use it. It's a sick everybody, everybody likes the surprise of four commandos, eight Jaegers. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, it was a surprise and it went just fine. And then you guys look, let's not attack. No, I'm just kidding. That's what you I would have done. What I would have done in your situation too. Um, yeah, do about the premium time business. Um, we we can always hit them with a whole bunch of refund tickets every time if we have to pay for it and people are DC. Right, that is true. That is, so, true. and they'll they'll quickly get bored of that if yeah. they honor it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, the, you, 
you know, they but have to build up their side of the bargain. They'll only honor it if the the player that drops was the leader. Like, the group leader. The one who has the premium. Is that speculation? Yes. I doubt it. I, I think that's... Essentially... It, it is going to be such a pain in the ass for them to deal with that, that I think when they realize it, they'll stick to the premium. Yeah. So Right. Well, not just that, but if they do that, obviously our next mo uh, movement would be to not use it. I'm just hoping... I'm hoping do what that we've been doing the, for two years. The pay-per-use model also comes with a pay-per-fucking-year of free, like, matches. I will pay $50 to use your private servers for an entire year. That's okay with me. Just don't make me pay per use. More than that, because premium that. time costs more than that. Yeah, I don't think they'll do that, because they'd rather nickel and dime you every time. Uh, there should be, like, a monthly plan, though. Like, per use is such a... For a thing like this, like, per use is fine for some things. Like, if you had... If you're playing, like, a 45-minute game, sure. Pay per use. No big deal. But you can have five-minute games in MechWarrior. Like, a, f a 550 drop does not last that long, unless it's on, like, Alpine and you're capping the whole time. So do you really want to pay, you know, 15 MC, or... It's probably going to be way more than 15. 15 is how much an airstrike costs. Speaking of which, we can set time limits. Dude, that is going to be fun. That's kind of a good segue, though, about the differences between a normal private lobby and a premium private lobby. Yeah. The TLDR is that a normal private lobby is useless, at least it's, in my opinion. Yeah, it's the same thing as what it is now. Just Well, it's, uh, it's the same thing, only you, you still automatically get your team. So the map is still random, and all that jazz is still and random. And you don't have to do the 3-3-3-3-3, three, 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 do you? You do. Nope. Oh, you do? No, no you don't. don't? No, you don't. I don't think so. You don't, yeah. So you if could you use did, that it, for... It would be like beyond useless. You you they don't say get to that, pick that matches to... though. Uh, you don't get to pick maps or the whatnot. So because I didn't read that you when I read it, I didn't see that it said that you don't have to. It said it will come under the same rules as the public do. It's implied in the fact that it says tonnage limits are allowed in the premium private match. Oh, I was talking about the the public the public queue the twelve. Twelve man, um, one that you can just throw yourself in. Oh, that one, oh. the the twelve man public queue that you can just throw yourself in. Twelve you man public matches free, do not free, change free, how free. they operate. They adhere to the three three heavy, three assault, three medium, three light. Uh, private matches where players choose the limitations of the match. There are two types: free. It doesn't say. Right. So the public queue is definitely going to confirm to the conform to the thirty three thirty three. Uh, the question oh. is whether the free private match is, because we know the players can, players can choose not. their mech well in lobby. So what it sounds like they did is they're for for public matches, they're getting rid of the lobby waiting system, which I think is good because it'll mean that new players can play faster and quicker more often. Whereas another Seabill nerf. No. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wow, this is, I mean, basically all we lose with private matches is that we can't set map or game mode. No, we mean, we can, I thought. Wait, Wait. you can't... It's you a have to mode. pay premium time to select game mode? Yeah. Ooh. What the fuck? That's fucking stupid. No, 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 in the free private match you can still set game mode. That yeah. is Pre literally the only oh, okay. thing you can set. Yeah. Yeah, it does say that, yeah. But, I mean, if we free private match, you, you don't okay. get to set tonnage or anything else, but everybody knows what to use anyways. So, well, you really need the skill at reading comprehension, the five. I, I do. I mean, I haven't leveled up in a while, ever since, I mean... Way more fun to just get angry at something and then realize you're wrong. It's, it's way more fun, because then I can make yeah. Siri drink. Siri, drink. I don't think you're done with that drink yet. Keep drinking. Oh, uh, uh, yep. Yeah, let's just finish that one off. There you go. I like this game. Me too. Finally, I have a way to punish Siri for contradicting me. Normally, I'm just like, oh shit, he's actually right. Never mind. Go back in what I said. Okay, well, that's I'm good. still fucking right. No, you are. You're definitely still right. It's just now you're slightly drunker. <laughs> Which makes me feel better about it. Um, 
okay. with these systems, though, I mean, how many of these leagues are going to start adopting completely different rules where we're playing on certain maps? Merrick will be completely different. I guarantee you every yeah. planet will be a map. Which is exciting. Which no, yeah, but could you imagine a league that can kind of create a kind of like a campaign flow? Can you imagine? I would hope Arhod would stay random maps, but Merrick having, you know, set maps is kind of cool. Can you imagine being able to tailor your builds to a map, guys? Like, It'll be okay, beautiful. Okay, <laughs> we're going to do a best of five on Alpine. Everyone get your LRMs right yeah, now. Yeah, like that. That's really, really fucking exciting. Because right now, one of the big things is that, well, I'm going to bring a brawler deck. Oh, shit, it's Alpine. Hey, hey, we brought we a brawler deck twice on Alpine tonight in one. Well, we're bringing a fast light comp on this 550 drop. Oh, oh Forest, Forest Colony. Colony. <laughs> Forest Colony never wins, in my opinion. Queen and I Forest. remember that all too well. Yeah, but um, for Arhod, it could stay random, but I'd actually expect it to be, say, drop one is this map, drop two is that map, drop three is that map, and also with the tonnage applied. And also, never ever drop on River City or Forest Colony, because they're just so small. Yeah, and it'll, it'll allow us to veto maps out of the rotation if they're <coughs> undeniably broken. <laughs> I'm looking at, well, sort of Crimson. Crimson is... You think Crimson's Crimson's broken? Crimson's awful. Oh yeah. Nah, it favors the side over there. I love Crimson. I Which side Crimson. do you think it favors? Nah, I, it it side. Side. Spawn. I don't think so. I think it can be beaten. I would not say that that's the most broken map right now. No, it can be beaten, but the fact that it can be beaten is not necessarily a disqualifier for it being broken. Just the fact that a, in competitive play, a 60-40 split is still a significant advantage. True. Yeah. True. I would still give Alpine most broken map award for conquest. River right City now. Knight. Blah. True. Alpine is pretty bad in that yeah. regard for conquest. Let's just ban River City Knight just entirely. I yeah. I okay. So fun fact: after River City Knight came out and everybody like hated playing on it, I loved that map. It was like my favorite map. I was like, I get to use night vision. This is the shit. And that was oh, right yeah. after ECM got implemented, and it was still super broken. So I just ran around in like a four-man group with my commando all day, and I had a hundred percent victory on River City Knight for like three months. <laughs> well, that, it sucks though, is you you know it technically you can mess with your settings, and you don't even need to use night vision. That's Hell, uh, Forest Colony, if you put your, your gamma all the way up, you actually get sunlight in the cave. Really? Yep. Yeah. Don't worry, your textures still flash yellow when you walk in, though. Sorry, sort of a side topic related to that, but the coming from the opposite side, what do you think are the most balanced maps right now? Probably the most symmetrical ones, like the Cosmic Manifold. Caustic. Caustic, HPG, Terra Therma. Yeah, but we're being Terra Therma just because balanced. it's Terra Therma. I think HPG is fairly balanced. I would agree with that. Uh, if they can... F actually, if they could... I said this last time on the Yager's stream, but if they fixed all the shitty invisible hitboxes, <laughs> HPG would be my favorite map. Oh, it's already my favorite map. Yeah. Purely because yeah, my gauze yeah. rifles sound awesome. Well, not just that, but it's like those those small gaps, you know, you, you see that mech yeah. that's like trying to hide behind it, and you're like, I'm going to get your leg, and it's like, oh, invisible wall. Yep. That really sucks. One uh, thing like I don't like about HPG distance from the center to the bases, though. I feel that it's way too long. Yeah. yeah. It is kind of... It's, and there's the, all the caps are set outside of the battle area. If you want to... It, it it kind of favors just fighting it out. They should they should basically move the bases so that they're not perfectly in the center, and you move them yeah, around uh, a bit. You know well, what? Something I hope they do because the Cry Engine has it is destructible walls or base walls or something. So, it's like make a again, make a part, make like a like a giant garage door that you could blow down. It has like 200 HP, but you can blow down the door in between your base and the center. Yeah. And then make it that Perfect. much quicker to go through or something, you know. What's so it, funny, it, Siri? It's like I was just thinking about drinking? somebody going in the middle of ter fuck you. Somebody going in the middle <laughs> of ter um HBG like the basement and then just shooting their way to the enemy cap like tunneling. <laughs> 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 
Stanley. Yeah, but no, but that's, yeah, that's like in destructible environments. But I'm just talking about specifics, like uh, you know, where they actually make base walls that mm -hmm. can that that can be destroyed. So it sets, and you, you know, you can have your LRM boats that hide behind those walls, but they can only stay there for so long. It's not like an indefinite thing. For me, HPG. Play Space Invaders. For me, HPG is the perfect example of what a seven cap map should be. I could see more caps on that. Like, personally, I would like to see one on top and one on the bottom. Like, that would make it so much different, because then you have to choose between, like, going top and bottom, whereas right now it's like, oh, somebody beat me to bottom, I'll just stand on top with a bunch of guns and wait for them to come out any of the entrances. <clears throat> I don't know. Siri drink. Fantastic. What? Oh god, I haven't looked at my chat in forever. One thing I will mention, the difference oh. between private and premium, or free and premium on the private matches, the view lock is restricted to premium. You mean the, the third person? Yep. If you oh. take a free private match, then you can use third person view. Eh, that's speculation. They don't say that you no, can. No, it's not speculation. It's right there. Yeah, yeah, they say let's, okay, but let's be realists right now. Who cares? Yeah, who cares? We're we're gonna be using the premium anyways. But it's yeah. sort of on I was their gonna end. Say, who, it would be a. Who cares? We're gonna be using first person. Like not having a mini map would yeah. suck. Plus, we're Actually, also pretty I good at policing ourselves. I understand as it is. why. I understand why. I think it's so that. People can drop into a free private match and then do like recordings for videos and such by while well, using third person. I, I don't know, but it, it's still I still think it the free matches should have the option. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I just don't find it that big a deal. Like I mean, you can just have it like a player really... vote. Just have like players yeah. who vote. You could have like a quick voting options at the bottom, being like, lock this, lock this, lock this. Like, do you want this, 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 or this? And then people vote. So you don't actually select. That would actually be fun. So you don't actually select a game mode when you drop. You just drop into a match, and then you have like three voting options. You can select like first person or third, and then you can select like which matches you want. And then you like if you care, you can vote, and if you don't care, you don't vote. Yeah, and then of course the next I'm kind of hoping is they build a lobby system where all the players can talk to each other. I think they wanted to, I think they want to get away from that though cuz I think that causes right now causes more problem than good. But clearly we're going to have the ability for a lobby system because cuz right now you're going to have rooms. Yeah. But yeah, cuz I mean the only thing is is you're still Dude, obviously actually, randomly you know what? dropping and randomly meeting people in in but... before in before the uh the group launch is just like in the social window. It just adds like a team B. Like that's all it is. There's no lobby. It's just like another tab in the social window that you invite people to. And then you've got like a couple more boxes. Like it's not going to be like a fancy new launch screen. Oh god, it totally is. <laughs> Siri drink. Everybody's Aww. just sitting here being like, oh god, he's right. No, I'm, I have faith. I don't. I just don't want you to be right. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I like why. Uh, why would they make it anything else? I don't know. I d I just think it's gonna be a scroll wheel on what we've currently got. It's just gonna be a scroll bar. There you go. You've now got twenty four people in your group. Oh Easiest solution. God. You don't actually get to pick who's on your team. Yeah, it <laughs> just. <laughs> Random. You think your social button's broke now? More yeah. loading times. Damn it, Chad. It's, it's going to be just cool, got right? good, Brothel. Triver. Dude, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm going to be the, uh, the optimist here and say I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, um, I'm still looking I've... forward to it no matter what. But yeah. My, yeah, I, my still... optimism has been burned away by months and months of drinking whiskey. Oh, no. <laughs> There's I'm also community warfare. To this. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely looking forward to this. I'm actually baffled, like I said earlier, at all the people who are getting mad that PGI is changing their mind 
and improving this. Where is this? Yeah. Is this? A ho Wait, hold on. It's probably in the feedback form. It's, it's, it's in our MWO instead of our I was going to say, the other Reddit subreddit. Uh, all Where hell, do you think it All be? hell the Reddit. No bias. serious table. The Reddit that shall not be named. But then people do, they like, they enjoy getting mad at stuff, don't they? I mean, just knee jerk. Yeah, let's get mad. They have a bit of fun being mad, and then they think about it, and they're fine. Shut up, Harry, you white knight. <laughs> yeah, Harry, yeah. you suck. Obviously, you just. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, it, I mean, yeah, maybe it's not exactly how we'd want it, you know, all free and everything, but think of the possibilities that I we've like, got now. I like that Paul posts all of his things in bright teal, so they're really easy to find. Like, whenever he posts in a, like, a big feedback thread, his posts are in bright teal. Oh, no, I have to check Reddit really quick. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm what excited. What haven't we discussed? Uh, speculations about how launch module will affect community warfare. Oh, my God. Siri, you would have... So, for those of you who didn't catch it earlier, uh, Harry got a pentakill today with an airstrike, for which we should all probably... Uh, honor him. It's probably by Siri drinking. <laughs> yeah, Siri, you should probably drink to that. It was actually a pentakill and a TK, so... Pentakill yes. and a TK? Well, so it was a hexakill. So the did TK it? was from the RT. Who did he TK? Oh, okay. Yeah. Who did you TK? Fun. I got T-Fun. T-Fun, oh. Yeah. I was hoping was really it was fun. Siri. <laughs> you it was one of those it. cases oh. where they're... they're they're all sat on base, and I'm running back, and I'm one of the first mediums to get back. And the lights were there, and I thought, I don't care. I know they're all sitting on base. I am arty in that. And I'm jumping, trying to get trying to get a view on it. I couldn't get a view, and I come around the corner. Well, there goes the arty strike, and I and then I run to the left, and no, the only one I got was T Fun, and they're all sat there still. So I thought, right, here goes. Do the line right across the base, and then uh, <laughs> then Team Speak just lit up. <laughs> <laughs> It's worth mentioning, it is worth mentioning, that in competitive drops, Harry never gets an airstrike off. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always he, he, Like, every else. single drop yeah. you'll listen to, you'll just hear Harry going like, you fuckers, let me have an airstrike. <laughs> <laughs> this I is really a proper like place that. to play that quake sound bit. Oh yeah. It <laughs> is, hold on, let me find somebody who has it. Nah, that's too much work. Yeah. This m m m m m you, got, you haven't showed the side of the screen, you got to move it over, Ruffle. Ruffle. Yeah. Oh, is it not showing up on the... Nope. Your overlay is covering the kill portion. Oh no... <laughs> I switched but, to that. like, Harry ended that match with 1,121 damage. The next was legal department at 450, he also got a good strike. And then the next from there was like 150. And we got like half our team was sub-100. And so, like, off two strikes, Harry got 140 match score and seven kills. God damn it, Harry. That's awesome. <laughs> well, I got five of the kills from airstrike. The other two I'm claiming. <laughs> well done. But you don't, you don't get that when you're in SJR. You do not get a, a score like that, because everyone's too damn good at killing everything in front of you. Give me a moment, I have to read Wisps- Wisps- Yeah, fucking hell, why do you have two S's in your name, Wispy? Wispsy. I know, it's like the most fucking awkward- Drink for not being able to pronounce something. God. What? What are you doing? What are you doing now? <laughs> what are we browsing? I don't know. I, oh, Siri said he'd uh, drink if there was a good enough joke in chat, and- Wispsy just posted a decent one. Yeah, where's Gut? I don't know. I do love that Gut starts every game with I'M GUT in all capitals. <laughs> yeah, you don't see the uh, the bad jokes he subjects us to before every game. <laughs> we Data. used to have we used to have somebody that would come in to uh like before competitive twelve mans and give us like motivational speeches. That was pretty good. They were just like famous speeches with, uh, uh, like with the words. Word. Yeah. I good. remember when RTs and airstrikes were buffed. I was getting two kills really often with the airstrike. I've <sighs> no, never had something I'm gonna, that I'm, good for a while. One of these times, I'm gonna find the soundbite of like me telling people on War Room. It was like my third or fourth episode, and I was like, 
guys, I'm telling you, this is huge. And they're like, I'm pretty sure the cooldown on Artie is like 30 seconds, Ravel. It's still going to You bring suck. that up more than I bring up <laughs> SRM Hit Reg. It's true, because it's really important that I'm right. <laughs> well, it's kind of like when we brought up to Matt Newman when we were complaining about the headshot chance on Artie, and he's like, well, the head component's the, you know, the highest thing on a mech, and then we're like, awesome. Jaeger mech, awesome. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, uh... New heavy, new new assault mech. God, I forgot. Yeah, to not that. an eighty, er, not an eighty-five tonner. Not yep, eighty-five. We got, um, have we got any Sana nerds that knows what we're getting? Oh, I think uh, it's the two. Banshee. There's I heard it was two the Banshee. Possibilities, yeah. Because we're we're pretty sure it's a ninety-five tonner. Let me get on Sarna quick. Oh, that guy's doing the only ninety-fiver. We go to categories. We scroll down. Yeah. Ninety-five ton jump jet mech, right? Yeah. Well, no, Wait, I don't think there is a 95 jump. No, he didn't say whether there was a jump jet or not. But yeah, I know so Banshee the is there. Is... Oh, the only and info I... we have is, is it's not 85 tons. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he said it, he pretty much implied it's not the Mauler as well. Yeah. And right. Said, I don't know Mauler, why people nice thought try. it was the Mauler. Like it... Because during yeah, NGNG's podcast, part three. 32 minutes, 55 seconds into it, Jesus. he talks about the Mauler art design and that their concept team was working on art for the Mauler. If they're working on art, there's no way it's a mech that's going to be released in the next month. Like, why did people... Right. Uh, okay, so it was never going to be the Mauler. Let's talk about that really quick. Um, so it's either going to be the Banshee... Could it be... Can't be the, one other. It can be the the Night Star, right? Uh huh. Night Star doesn't actually look too bad. That actually looks kind of fun. I'd love to see a mech that shape. It's such a like a low to the ground it, assault. Basically, the Night Star was kind of like the replacement to the Marauder. Yeah. I'd There's like actually quite a few mechs. It could be. Well, a lot of those are. It's actually those two, we just know it's not 85. We're speculating, we're speculating at 95. Yeah. But... Uh, the 95, it can only be those two. Wasn't there? Uh, well, we know it's not the Annihilator. Um. Yeah. Date. What you, I think. Do we have Do we have date for Pillager? I would love a Pillager. Um. Didn't Didn't they mention at some point that it was like just barely three variants or something like that with the hero? Because the the Night Star does have an already made hero variant. Yeah, it only has two other main. Three, uh, because it's, like, it's the base variant and then the two other ones. Uh, yeah, right. right, I think there's a four-legged mech, but obviously I don't think we're going to ever see a four-legged mech. A quad. A quad would be kind of fun, Siri drink. Do we have um, no no joy chance of the King Crab? Yeah, maybe, there's but no way. I doubt it. It would be yeah, the I worst know. mech in the game, though, wouldn't it? Two AC-20s on an assault mech. It doesn't matter, like, that profile is just... Fine. Yeah, well, that's what I said when people were like, "Oh my God, it's the it's if it's the Annihilator." I was like, "Dude, the Annihilator will be the trashiest mech of all times." Do you have to realize how far four your head? The X tens. But your head, you'd have to put. So okay, so let's picture Forest Colony. You're peeking over the ridge. You have to peek ninety percent of your mech to shoot your LBXs. and your head is just like the first thing that comes over. Dead F. Dead F. I want it to be the Night Star now. I don't actually want it to be the Banshee because I think the Banshee looks like every other mech ever made. And I think the Night Star looks cool. Yeah, I hope it's the Night Star. Pair of gauze rifles. Mm -hmm. So it won't That's... be that. Pair of gauze with a PPC and I think a pulse laser and a small laser. But I it's think the rifle. assumption that um, they but only it's... put the 95 oh. ton. To the 95 tonner in because we haven't got one is probably not the greatest because yeah. there was a long time they were just releasing things like 50 ton mediums and uh, not not covering the I think the reason we've got a good spread now is just the sheer amount of mechs I don't think they try and fill it in I'd like a Cyclops I'm looking at the other 90 tonners Joy of browsing Sarna I know, right? Welcome to War Room, where I look at things on Sarna. Uh, it's gonna be the it's gonna be the blood asp. Don't worry, guys. Clan, Clan, mech. Clan tech be damned. <laughs> uh, Cyclops wouldn't be bad. Nope. 
I would love to see a Cyclops. I'd love to see how they design it. Um, wait, are we getting that on Tuesday? Yeah, I believe so. Holy! Now, has there ever uh, been another word about the day. oxide rework? No. No. Nope. That'll be a, that'll be a, like you know that'll be like one of the surprise things. We're like, oh, by the way, we're reeking the oxide for Tuesday. I don't know if it is now an eighty-five to... ton Jenner. <laughs> <laughs> it's now the size of a stalker. With uh, don't worry, it still does a hundred. I'd buy that. I'd buy that. <laughs> what would you guys What would you guys rather fight? A hundred A hundred Jenner-sized atlases, or uh. 10 atlas sized Jenners. Obviously, the atlas sized Jenners. Atlas sized Jenners? <laughs> there was an oxide used in an MRBC game. Yeah, we used one today for the light drop. You'll see them in uh, Merrick too in the no jump jet matches. Mm hmm. Yeah. I just. The, 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 the no jump jets makes me sad, but I always was baffled by the you're paying for a hero, your quirk is less. Acceleration or deceleration, whatever it is. Whoa! Is Captain Terrific right? Is DX11 Tuesday? Really? Fucking remember. Um. That's gonna change nothing, correct. though, is it? March 4th is the DX11 patch. At least according to what they said in December. So. But uh, all that's going to introduce is bugs, surely. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm not like I don't care. I don't know. Are they doing it because they've got future plans to put stuff in, or? We're running on. Are they, are they on DX9 right now? Yes. Yeah, yeah that's why. <laughs> DX11 yeah, I mean... might bring SLI. We might be able to use one, more than one GPU. Dude, that'd be sick. I'll, I'll, I'll finally get to use like six monitors again. Siri drink. Um. Yeah. I'm excited for Tuesday. That'll be fun. Um, I'm gonna be gone all weekend, so I'll have a nice break until Sunday. Then I gotta cast a bunch of matches with Siri. Uh, you a full um, assault hero mix in? Can I? Wait, wait, what? Can you afford assault hero mix then? <laughs> Can I? Yeah. Not really, no. But I'll be able to see what it is, which is good enough for me. Yeah. Um. Who knows? Maybe we'll see uh, the Smurfy change to UI 2.0. I feel like that'll probably be second patch of March, but who knows? I'd like to see it. I'm really sick and tired of the current one. <laughs> Everybody kept telling me to like make a PowerPoint about how to make mechs, and I didn't want to because I know it's just going to change and then I'd have to do it again. Ah, <laughs> uh, Is this... yeah. Oh no, it's a mech. Okay, um... More pints. Yeah, Siri should probably drink. Uh... I did have a have... whole list of mechs earlier. And I didn't think to bring it. Yeah. Siri, you are typing things in chat. What do you have to say? Um, I was just going to go jump back a little to the fact that the 12-man queue, the organized 12-man queue, is going to be 33-33 restricted. Now, we've been practicing that tonight just to see what it's like. And it's pretty obvious that you go with, at the moment at least, Three Highlanders, three Cataphracts, three Shadowhawks, three Jenners. Mm -hmm. uh, and Skaters. Yeah, if you replace the Shadowhawks with Skaters, you could do that. But it's overall a reduction in diversity. If, and this is a big if, game balance remains in the same state as it is right now. Right, because there's the... Uh... Jump jet speculation. Yeah, is the jump jet right. nerf on Tuesday too? No, no idea. But I mean, by the time that this launch module comes out, if they have hit jump jets with the nerf bat, then I think most of our preconceptions are going to go out the window. That's true. It totally will depend on that. And, and then so also. It's still going to be a slight reduction in diversity um, in and of itself, the launch module. 
but the jump jet rebalance will hopefully promote diversity enough that it'll we'll still see many different options being used in the public queue. Yeah, that's a good call. Um, are there any last points anybody wants to make about anything we talked about, about tonight? Russ's tweet on the uh, re need to put attention back towards the missile systems and hit registration. I know. Finally. King of stating obvious 2014. Yep. Well, originally they said it'll have SRMs, to wait until community but warfare. But now he says missiles. Yeah, because his son played a game and uh, he didn't get a registered shot. <laughs> You're terrible, Harry. It's so random. Uh, but wait, really, where's I mean, this tweet? It's yeah, it somewhere. It's, it was on, on his Twitter. But it was but on Russ's Twitter, yeah. A while ago we had the SRMs are just going to be good enough until Community Warfare 2016. Um, but hopefully now we'll see the return of Magician the SRM it. packing medium. Because somebody said, oh, you know, remove HSR on SRMs. And I can't remember, somebody else made a good point that it may well have been completely broken before. It's just that that, that splash damage was so insane when we were... Team speak waffles. Uh, you know, that it's always been broken. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the only reason that missiles were so overpowered before was because of splash damage, and 2.5 with the broken splash was really, really bad. Hm. Alright, well, uh... Anybody else have anything they want to talk about with the group? Otherwise, we'll close it down for the night. Uh, I think we need to mention... Taco Bell Waffle Taco? <laughs> no. Greatest invention ever. Uh, well, I thought that was a joke about me. No. So, so here's the thing. If, if Taco Bell serves breakfast all day, I'll totally eat it. Because I'm sick of being on the road at like 11.05 and being like, well, shit, now I can't eat breakfast anywhere at all. That sucks. Jack in the Box. They have like one of those in the US. Jack in the Box? Yeah. They're rare, rare cases. They're not common. Hold on, let me let me Google one. They're all over the place. Just not on the East Coast. I'm Googling a Jack in the Box on the map right now because I want to prove you. My roommate would like to inform everyone that Jack in the Boxes are quote unquote fucking everywhere in California. Seeing as we live in Minnesota. That doesn't really help. There you go. 2,200 restaurants across 19 states. Yeah, there's the thing. 19 states, not 50. Anyway, yeah. anyway, waffle tacos aside, Mech Warrior? Any last words? <laughs> Alright, let's do shoutouts. Uh, as you always, in reverse order. Sace, take it away. Oh, just start with me. Uh, shout out to everybody doing the stats for this season. All the videos that are going to be coming out. I mean... This season three stands to be the most easily accessed of any of the seasons, which I'm excited about. Yep, I agree. It's going to be fun. All right, and that leaves us with Harry. Um, shout outs to uh, everyone who's planning the MRBC and uploading videos. Thanks a lot. Um, thanks a lot to the California Conquerors and Robinson Rangers for that great match. So. Uh, check it out on MRBC. Uh, when 1v1s come in, Wispy, I'm going to claim you. <laughs> That's it. All right, Sir Trent. Shout out to Prout Servers. Oh, yeah, going to be good. All right, Shadow Broker, Queen Blade yourself. Shout out to Atonius Rex. It is his birthday today. He also hit, we, uh, the Merrick site has hit 10,000 unique hits today as well. Cool. cool. Siri, you should probably sure. drink for Tony's birthday. <laughs> and then uh, welcome back Nico Snow, who is apparently rehired back to PGI as the uh, CM. And that's right, he left, right? Mm-hmm. That's weird. Well, he left IGP, and then he was hired by PGI. And despite what people say, they are distinct companies. Yeah. yeah. So. 
my response to that is just wild. Okay, and Siri. Uh, my shout out is going to go to Doyle, you sexy fucking Brit. Go fuck yourself, you cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my shout out is to the one extra person that viewed my article and made tonight so much fun for me, Siri Drink. Um, it's been a good bet. We'll have to make more of these in the future. He has to get up to get more. <laughs> um, shout out to everybody who is here uh, to watch, as always. Shout out to my guests being on. Thank you for staying up late, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, big shout out to BSK for stomping me up and down the uh, the match today and as sure fun matches though they were they were a blast I had a lot of fun uh, our guys are learning much learning yes trial by fire that's what the recruits get um, Siri and I are going to be sitting down on Sunday to cast uh, three matches as of right now maybe more we have three at least lined up. Um, I'll be making a thread on Reddit for people that want their matches cast so that they can like post about it and be like, oh, here are the streams from both sides, etc., etc. Um, so we're doing some speed cast on Sunday, get as many of those up for you guys as possible. Um, I have a new webcam coming, which I got for my stream donations, so thank you to the people that have donated to my stream so far. You'll be able to see me in not, 10, or in not uh, like 240. It'll be in like some nice 720p. It'll be nice. You can see all the all the beard hairs grow, all the rest of them shrink through my bald scalp. Um, so yeah, thanks for everybody. Thanks for supporting the show, coming out, and watching, watching on YouTube, etc. And thanks for the guests. We will catch you guys next week. And if you're looking for just Siri and I, we'll be here on Sunday. Have a good one, guys. Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems, nominal.